Welcome to Access a Trader, the number one community for those who are committed to taking control of their trading in order to achieve success, profitability, and longevity. Thank you for joining us. Here's Dan Shapiro to help you find your edge, master your process, and own your future. Hey guys, good evening everybody. Welcome to another edition of uh, the Access uh, nightly wrap-up show. Happy Monday, everybody. Hope everybody had, uh, again, a great uh, Easter uh, weekend. Hope everybody had a good uh, trading session today. Uh, again, if you are brand new to the channel, please like, subscribe, uh, definitely come aboard. Uh, you know, we, we broadcast from, uh, this video goes out Monday through Wednesday and again on the weekends, uh, trying again, take it day by day uh, and find the most, ba you know, try to find the best value in the most unbiased uh, sort of way uh, through technical analysis. So let's talk about this, right? We, we talked about on the video, uh, on the weekend video, the importance of two levels, right? We had 319 uh, to the upside on the Qs. We had 313 to the downside of the Qs. And you can see here, we're, we're getting very, very tight, right? Something's going to give here. Um, you know, we had a few questions that we had to answer going into this long weekend. Number one, how is the market going to react to uh, the jobs number? If you guys remember, uh, 236,000 jobs uh, were created. Again, was there was there really a big uh, reaction to this number uh, once the futures started trading Sunday night? Probably not, right? It was up a little bit. Futures are down a little bit. Not really a heavy dose of significance there. Uh, we also had, um, you know, we also had to deal with, if you guys remember, I was talking about the, the Samsung numbers, right? Samsung came out with earnings uh, like 96% of, there was a big plunge in earnings. Uh, they were cutting the output production of chips. The other question was, well, how was the market, right? How are these chips and Apple and NVIDIA and all these AMDs of the world, how are they going to uh, react to this news, right? We got the answer to that as well. So it's it's super important to, you know, to really start thinking uh, within the lines. Sometimes, you know, people start thinking outside the box and they start to get a little bit ahead of themselves and they start overthinking and anticipating. Sometimes you just have to think inside the box. And inside the box, you're trying to uh, to really rationalize um, the news that's literally in front of you. So not only did we have to, uh, to kind of digest the jobs number, the market had to kind of digest uh, the Samsung earnings, then we had to come out with a new round of headlines that China is apparently surrounding Taiwan, right? They had like 12 you know, warships and, you know, just a bad, bad situation there. And the question was, well, how is the market going to react? So you you, you woke up this morning, uh, then you saw the futures, you know, down a little bit, then they escalated a little bit more towards the open. You said to yourself, well, that's it. You know, they're going to start going back to the bottom of the channel. And to, to the bull's credit, and, and again, correct me if you heard this before, the market continues to discount bad news or news that is deemed to be uh, not positive. And you saw that the semiconductors right from the word go, that was the first group to, that was gonna lead higher, right? The, the group that was most affected by a potential Chinese, Taiwanese, you know, uh, interaction again, because remember where all these chips made, right? Uh, so that wouldn't have helped. Uh, you know, the, the Samsung production cuts, that wouldn't have helped. And when you look up in the, in the morning, you got NVIDIA, just explode, right? We talked about NVIDIA uh, after uh, in the weekend update. NVIDIA exploded. AMD, right? AMD exploded. So the, the point is, again, I think a lot of traders, especially new traders, they try to view the market as a rational place of, of, of doing business. It's not. It's completely irrational. Everything that you think is normal is not normal. Again, pandemic 2020, lockdown for two weeks. We should have went to hell in a handbasket. We were all-time highs two months later. Again, forget about the word rational. Just talk talk about and 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 really put to, put together a thesis based on price action. So today, if you saw three pieces, three separate pieces of bad news being engulfed, that's not a bad thing, right? Who knows where the market's going to be tomorrow? We're going to be having this conversation, NASDAQ down 1,000. But the, the point is, you take the face value. You're thinking inside the lines of the data that you're getting, not what you think is going to happen. That's outside the lines, right? You, st you start thinking inside the lines, you start looking at the production, right? You start looking at the production of news flow coming in and how the market reacts. If the market continues to react positive on negative news, that's the only thing you have to work for. Again, I understand creativity and all that stuff, but sometimes on the surface, the market is really screaming at you, hey, you don't need to be creative. Look what's happening right now, right? Look what's happening right now. You don't need to be creative and trade based on the market that you have, not the market that you think 
uh, that you want. So this is where we are going into tomorrow, guys. Remember, 319 is the key level. That's all it is. That's all you need to remember. If you if you are uh, contemplating a short position, watch that 319 level because if the bulls start reclaiming that 319 level on the queues and we start building 319, because you can see here, three days in a row, we got rejected off the five-day moving average. If the bulls finally reclaim that 319, yeah, we're going to, you know, this high probability we're going to start testing uh, back last week's highs of nearly uh, 322 and start uh, start moving higher as well. Here's where I play devil's advocate, though, right? Because, again, I, I don't trade or, or get prepared for the next day with rose-colored glasses. Everything what I just said was super-duper bullish, right? Negating bad news. The groups that were affected the most led the market higher today. Here's where it gets a little bit sticky. And again, I'm putting this a little bit on the back burner, a little bit in the back of my mind, but at least I know it's out there. I'm conscious of that as well. The, all the stuff that I just said was super duper bullish, right? But here's the problem. The NASDAQ, the QQQs, after everything I just said, has still put in three days in a row of lower highs. You see that? High, lower high, lower high. That's the curveball. And that's exactly what you have to do as a trader. You always try to play devil's advocate, no matter how much you are biased in that one direction. Always remember there's underlining, there's underlying things that could always disrupt, uh, you know, the kind of derail uh, your, your potential day the next day. And that's the only thing that I, I don't like. Um, I am willing to give the bulls the benefit of the doubt tomorrow, uh, especially in the technology space. So again, guys, this 319 level, super duper bullish. If we start to build, uh, good things going to happen. Uh, obviously, I really like NVIDIA tomorrow. Again, we talked about this little mini channel that got above uh, this weekend. Uh, closed above the five-day moving average. That's super duper bullish. Uh, obviously, NVIDIA for tomorrow. Any dip in the morning uh, should be bought into the rising 60-minute uh, support. Or if it starts taking out today's channels, uh, they were coming in for the 280, 285, and 290s. All short-term expiration for either the weeklies or for next week. Super duper flow there in the options market. Uh, AMD, again, same thing as NVIDIA. Choose your drug of choice. One's a $200 stock, one's a $95 stock. But the point is they both reclaim back the five and the 10-day moving average. Same notes on AMD. It needs to confirm now the 10-day. If, if AMD starts confirming the 10-day moving average, it's going to wake up as well. Look at these Bitcoin names. Usually they're not names I would turn around, but Bitcoin, from what I hear, uh, is starting to, to to do well again, right? Riot today broke out. Congratulations for all you guys who took this in the webinar uh, off this 10-10 area. But guys, look at Mara. Look at Mara. Look how tight Mara is getting. Look at this channel here of Mara. If Mara starts getting above this whole channel tomorrow, man, this thing could wake up as well. So again, uh, for all you guys who track Bitcoin, again, Bitcoin's not really my thing, uh, but for all you guys who track Bitcoin, you know, keep an eye on Mara tomorrow, especially if, if Riot continues to uh, to go strong. Mara could catch up right with it. Looks absolutely fantastic. A washout into the 60-minute support on both of the stocks uh, look very, very good. And if they start reclaiming back today's channels, uh, maybe you could get a second-a-day run. So sometimes, again, guys, like I said, you could put a lot of thought into your next day's process. Uh, today, we, you know, we got some pretty good answers uh, to questions that we had over the weekend. And now the question is going into tomorrow's sessions, can the bulls reclaim the five-day moving average on the queues? And if they do so, how much can they stretch? Guys, have a great night, everybody. God bless. I got to take my son to practice. And with God's willing, I will see you all tomorrow. Take care.